Welcome to the Truth Report. I'm Barry Nussbaum. James Comey, the FBI director fired Tuesday by President Trump, learned of his ouster while addressing agents at the FBI field office in Los Angeles. Comey was talking to the agents when news of his firing appeared on television, tuned into news channels. Trump fired Comey earlier Tuesday, ending a rocky year-long stretch for America's top cop who had come under fire for his handling of the Clinton email probe and whose agency has been investigating whether Trump's campaign had ties to Russia. The president told Comey in a brief letter that he could no longer effectively lead the bureau and called for new leadership that restores public trust and confidence in law enforcement at the FBI. Today on The Truth Report, we will examine why President Trump felt it was necessary to fire James Comey as director of the FBI, only the second director to be dismissed while on the job in history. And we will review how key people are reacting to the firing of Comey. On July 5th, 2016, Comey publicly acknowledged that a massive body of evidence was accumulating against then-candidate Hillary Clinton and described it at some length during a press conference. He also acknowledged the former Secretary of State probably broke the law when she used hacker-friendly home-based private email servers to conduct official State Department business, and contrary to the State Department rules. But after airing Clinton's many transgressions, Comey gave her a pass. He said, although there is evidence of potential violations of the statutes regarding the handling of classified information, our judgment is that no reasonable prosecutor would bring such a case. From the group of 30,000 emails returned to the State Department in 2014, 110 emails in 52 email chains have been determined by the owning agency to contain classified information at the time they were sent or received. Eight of those chains contained information that was top secret at the time they were sent. 36 of those chains contained secret information at the time. And eight contained confidential information at the time. That's the lowest level of classification. Separate from those, about 2,000 additional emails were upclassified to make them confidential. Those emails had not been classified at the time that they were sent or received. The FBI also discovered several thousand work-related emails that were not among the group of 30,000 emails returned by Secretary Clinton to state in 2014. So, after listing the crimes committed, inexplicably, Comey then concludes and recommends against prosecution, even though such a determination is expressly not part of his job at the FBI. Attorney General Jeff Sessions has requested an opinion from Deputy Attorney General Rod Rosenstein, who didn't hold back in a long letter delineating Comey's missteps. He lambasted Comey both for his July statement that Hillary Clinton would not face indictment and for Comey's October 28th letter announcing the reopening of the Clinton investigation. Here's what that letter said in part. I cannot defend the director's handling of the conclusion of the investigation of Secretary Clinton's emails, and I do not accept or understand his refusal to accept the nearly universal judgment that he was mistaken. Almost everyone agrees the director made serious mistakes. Rosenstein continued by saying, the FBI is unlikely to gain public and congressional trust until it has a director who understands the gravity of the mistakes and pledges never to repeat them. Having refused to admit his errors, the director cannot be expected to implement the necessary corrective actions. In Rod Rosenstein's letter, he argued that the reputation and credibility of the FBI had suffered under Comey's leadership and affected the entire Department of Justice. Rosenstein took Comey to task in the memo for concluding that former Secretary of State Hillary Clinton should not have been prosecuted for maintaining an unsecure email server in her home through which classified material had been set and received and for publicly announcing his opinion. 
He said, it is not the function of the director to make such an announcement. At most, the director should have said the FBI completed its investigation and presented its findings to the attorney general. Wow. The deputy attorney general also argued that Comey's release of derogatory information about Clinton, whom Comey called extremely careless with regards to how she handled classified information in the now famous news conference in which he made that announcement, was improper. Quote, it's a textbook example of what federal prosecutors and agents are taught not to do. Unquote. So now you know why it happened. Now, let's examine how key people are reacting. Three former assistant directors of the FBI, James Kallstrom, Bill Gavin, and Ron Hosko, all thought Comey sealed his fate after his July 5 press conference in which he assumed the role of prosecutor and recommended no charges against Hillary Clinton for her use of a private email ser server during his tenure, her tenure sorry, as Secretary of State. I'm glad it happened, Colstrom said of Comey's firing. I think Jim Comey, way back, almost a year ago, kind of forgot he was the FBI director. He goes on, Comey danced with the devil and later on down the road talked about this great investigation the FBI conducted. Of course they had no subpoena power. They couldn't compel any investigation or search warrants. They had to beg people to look at things. The inter interview with Hillary Clinton, in my view, was a sham. And he continued, Comey threw the FBI under the bus and the reputation of the FBI under the bus. Kallstrom concluded, that's why I'm very mad about what I've been mad about for a very long time. Gavin said that Comey's firing was something that had to happen. He said, Jim Comey is a bright guy. He's an ethical guy. But the bottom line is when he made a prosecutive of opinion in an investigatory manner. He made a mistake. We all make mistakes in life. This was a big one that was obvious to everyone. Former assistant director Hosko said, Comey's firing was shocking, but he wasn't surprised in it the least bit. Certainly there are going to be some at the FBI who think Comey went too far back in July, Hosko said. I think that is reasonable minds can agree. It's the province of a prosecutor. He thought Comey was forced to throw himself on a grenade over former Attorney General Loretta Lynch's airport tarmac meeting with former President Bill Clinton. Comey's firing was the price he had to pay, Hosko said. Here's a list of key Democrats and their comments before the firing was announced. Secretary of State and almost President Hillary Clinton blamed her losing the election on Comey. Senator Chuck Schumer said he does not have confidence in the FBI Director Comey any longer. Congresswoman Maxine Waters said the FBI Director has no credibility. Senator Bernie Sanders said it would not be a bad thing for the American people if Comey stepped down. Former President Barack Obama said the FBI should not operate with innuendo or leaks. Former Senator Harry Reid called for an investigation into the FBI director himself. Congressman Steve Cohen said the lack of the FBI, for the sake of the FBI, Comey should resign. Congressman Hank Johnson said his confidence in the FBI director's ability to lead this agency has been shaken. Hillary Clinton advisor and Bill Clinton campaign manager James Carville, well, he said Comey worked for the Republicans. <laughs> senator Tim Kaine, vice presidential candidate and current senator, compared Comey to Hoover taping Martin Luther King. Senator Barbara Boxer said Comey's public decision to investigate Huma Abedin's emails was a betrayal. TV commentator Keith Olbermann said Comey needs to resign immediately. The Washington Post editorial board said Comey was not doing his job. The New York Times said Mr. Comey's breathtakingly rash and irresponsible decision had undermined the American people's trust in the nation's top law enforcement agencies. Hillary Clinton's campaign manager also hint hinted that Comey might have to step down because of his bias against Hillary. 
Now, I don't think it's necessary to tell you that almost every single Democrat we just outlined who was previously calling for Comey to be fired is now outraged that Comey has been fired. I'm serious. James Comey wrote a letter to a number of FBI staff addressing his dismissal and acknowledging the U.S. president is well within his powers to remove the FBI head. Comey personally said, quote, I have long believed that a president can fire an FBI director for any reason or for no reason at all, unquote. Comey stressed in the letter revealed those are his feelings and he's not upset. Stay in touch. We'll be following up on this story. You can write to me directly by sending me an email to barry at americantruthproject.org and go to our website where you can sign up to be on our mailing list so you never miss an important episode. You can handle the truth. We intend to bring it to you. I'm Barry Newsbaum.